Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk Vladimir Klitschko against Marius Wok. I like Vladimir Klitschko in this fight. In fact, I think Vladimir Klitschko likely gets a knockout. I believe he becomes the first guy to stop Marius Wok. Let's talk about why. One of the secrets to the Klitschko brothers, both of them, is that they're actually above average athletes. They're not just big men. They're actually athletic big men, right? They're not just getting by on size and power. They're also getting by on coordination. I believe to beat Vladimir Klitschko, you're going to have to bring some dynamic to the party to give him a problem. And let me just say, in boxing, sometimes the dynamic you're bringing to the party is a lack of height. I believe the guys who give Vladimir Klitschko problems are shorter guys. I've said this in a video I made a year ago on this very fight. It's shorter guys, guys like Lehman Brewster, right? Guys who can literally scoot around the ring, have the foot speed to press Vladimir Klitschko, who can come in at angles and get by his left jab, right? His left jab sets the table for him. It keeps opponents outside where he's effective. Vladimir Klitschko doesn't have an inside game, in my opinion. I believe that it's either Southpaws, Corey Sanders, Tony Thompson, their first fight. It's either Southpaws who can literally get under and get around Vladimir Klitschko's left jab, or who come in and can throw power shots over Vladimir Klitschko's right, straight right hand, right? His right power punch. Those are the kind of guys who give him problems. Or a Lehman Brewster who is coming in lower than Klitschko, is shorter than Klitschko, and he's throwing predominantly power shots, right? He's, in effect, smothering Klitschko. Those are the guys who can get it done. Now, the problem Marius Wok will have, in my opinion, is that he's not the athlete Vladimir Klitschko is, right? Vladimir Klitschko does better against taller right-handed fighters, which is exactly what Marius Wok is, right? He's not going to beat Klitschko on foot speed. He's not going to beat Klitschko on athleticism. In other words, Klitschko is always going to be able to turn to get the angle he wants. And neither Wok nor Klitschko can fight inside. So Wok is not going to be able to duck under Klitschko's left jab, get inside, and rough him up. Rather, Wok is kind of like a poor man's clone of Vladimir Klitschko. So Wok has said in interviews, and keep in mind, Wok has much less experience than Vladimir Klitschko in going the distance against world-class competition. Keep in mind, Wok has been fighting the Kevin McBrides of the world. There's a huge gap. I know it doesn't look that way after Kl uh, Vladimir Klitschko's last fight, but there is a huge gap between the Tony Thompsons of the world and the level of opposition that Marius Wok has been facing, right? I believe Mike Mullo beat Kevin McBride, right? Don't be fooled into thinking that Wok has proven himself, even though he's in his 30s, against the same level of competition that Vladimir Klitschko has. So if you have two fighters, both big men, Right, both of whom lead with a left jab, both of whom try to one to you, right? Tuck a hard right behind the 
left jab, neither of whom can fight inside, right? I'm going to go with the guy who's the better athlete, who has shown the stamina to go the distance against world-class competition, and who, in my opinion, has the faster hands and should be able to outmaneuver his slightly taller, a bit less coordinated opponent, right? I like Vladimir Klitschko in this fight. Keep in mind, every time Vladimir Klitschko has fought a guy who's tall like him, right? Think Ray Austin. Think Tony Thompson recently, right? Every time Vladimir Klitschko has literally dominated that fight. He has imposed himself on his opponent. He gets in trouble when he's fighting shorter guys like Sam Peter, who are coming in with hooks that he's a bit unprepared for. If you're a shorter guy and you can slip his left jab and you come inside and you're clever enough not to have him grab you right away, you actually have a chance at some punches. That's why, in my opinion, and I know it's controversial, Vladimir Klitschko would have an awfully hard time versus Mike Tyson circa 1988 because the Tyson game is exactly the kind of game that would give Vladimir Klitschko problems. Let me go one step further. I believe against Southpaws, who, keep in mind, can neutralize a left jab, right? I believe a Southpaw over on this side of Vladimir Klitschko would give him all kinds of problems. I encourage everyone to look at the CompuBox numbers on the first Tony Thompson fight. I know he dominated Tony in the rematch. Let me just say this. If you're analyzing Vladimir Klitschko, the strategy that Klitschko threw down in the rematch where he drops his hands, right? Number one, I don't believe that he would do that against a guy who he did not know well, right? He had sparred with Tony Thompson years ago. He had fought Tony Thompson once already in the rematch. Klitschko, who's a very cautious fighter, decided to get aggressive, drop his hands. He never does that. Let me also say, too, that what he did, it was successful, right? He dominated that fight. Tony Thompson's people have no dispute with the stoppage, right? But it was very high risk, right? If he dropped his hands like that against the Mike Tyson, he'd be asking for trouble. Okay, you know, if he drops his hands like that against any guy who's creative and coming inside, can come inside low, can stutter and have you guessing when he's going to come inside. If, if he dropped his hands like that against Corey Sanders, right, who knocked him out in a title fight in two rounds, he would be in big trouble. Right here, he doesn't have to resort to anything like that to rob a lefty of angles. Right here, he can literally fight the kind of fight that he enjoys fighting. The Emmanuel Stewart fight, where you start with a left jab, then you start throwing left hooks, then you start to work a right hand behind the left hand, right? And then you take out the opponent, like Vladimir Klitschko took out another tall guy, Calvin Brock. That's the kind of fight I'm expecting here. I think Marius Wach has never faced any fighter like Vladimir Klitschko. I'm guessing that around the midway point of this fight, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth rounds, I'm expecting Vladimir Klitschko to close the show. I think Marius Wach, who does have a heavy punch, I believe he's been getting by on size and inferior competition. You know, Vladimir Klitschko, say what you will. But let's remember, he did fight David Hay. Right? Let's remember, he did fight Tony Thompson. 
You know, I'm not saying he's fought legendary names. Um, David Hay, I think, is a Hall of Famer. But my point to you is Vladimir Klitschko has fought top shelf guys, right? The Lehman Brewster rematch. Marius Watt hasn't. I think that's a big difference. And I think Vladimir Klitschko's athleticism and sta uh, stamina quite frankly, and the fact that he has faster feet and faster hands than Marius Walk will get him the win. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say that I'll be surprised if a big man who's never gone 12 rounds against a guy who's going to force the tempo, right? And we know Vladimir Klitschko is going to be there sticking a jab like a piston in Marius Wok's face. He's going to force Marius Wok to fight. They're not going to be a lot of slow rounds, right? And because Vladimir Klitschko has great punching power, can take you out with a left hook or a straight right hand, right? You always have to be awake. I have a hard time believing that Marius Wok is now suddenly going to be able to go 12 rounds against a guy his size with a big punch who's a better athlete who's going to force the issue. I'm expecting a stoppage. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.